Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'm going to show you how to secure your Bitcoin using the new Ledger Crypto Starter Pack. So let's get started. So congratulations, you've bought yourself some Bitcoin on an exchange, and now you're the proud owner of some cryptocurrency. But that's just the first step. Now you want to take possession of your Bitcoin. Bitcoin is all about self-custody. In order to do that, you're going to need to transfer your Bitcoin to a wallet where you control the private keys. And one of the best ways to do that if you're just getting started is the Ledger Crypto Starter Pack. I'm on the homepage here for the Crypto Starter Pack. You can see that for $69, you're going to get the Ledger Nano S hardware wallet. And this is a great wallet for storing your Bitcoin. Now, the starter pack uh, not only comes with the Ledger Nano S hardware wallet, it also comes with the crypto starter pack guide, and it comes with a $25 voucher for buying some crypto on Coinify. All right, so you can find out more about the crypto starter pack on this page. I'll leave a link to that down in the description below. But once you've got your hands on the Ledger Nano S how do you get it set up? That's what I'm here to show you. So I have my Ledger Nano S and I'm going to unbox it for you and show you how to get it set up. And then we'll transfer some Bitcoin into it from an exchange. In today's case, I'm going to use some Bitcoin that you may have already purchased on Coinbase. So let's get started. Okay, so here's the box that the Ledger Nano comes in. We'll just get this going. All right, this is the Ledger Nano device. Now this is a hardware device which holds the private keys for your Bitcoin wallet. The Bitcoin wallet is a combination of a private key and a public key. So the private key is always stored offline in this hardware device, which makes it very secure. Contrary to what some people think, no one can hack your Bitcoin as long as you keep it stored safely and securely but it's completely up to you. And this is the first step, it's getting your wallet set up. All right, the Ledger Nano S comes with a little booklet here. Talks a little bit about how the Ledger Nano works. And then we get a recovery sheet here. Now we're gonna use this recovery sheet to write down our 24 word recovery phrase. This is an English readable representation of the private key. It's just a mathematical transformation, taking the numbers and turning them into words. So you want to keep this safe and secure. Write it down, put it in a safe place, and don't let anyone else see it. Right, and there we have uh, some accessories, the cable, a little key fob, and a lanyard. All right, so uh, let's get this thing hooked up and get started. Once you've got your device unboxed and ready to go, uh, we'll start with downloading Ledger Live from the Ledger website. So on the Ledger page here, we can just go to Downloads. We're gonna download the app. And I'm gonna choose the Windows version. All right, I'll just drop that in my Downloads folder. All right, and then we can just double click that installer and get going here. I'm gonna go ahead and install it in the default location. When we're done, we can just run Ledger Live. All right, and then we'll get started. We'll agree to the terms. All right, and in this case, we've got the Ledger Nano S. We'll go ahead and click that. It is our first time, so we're gonna go ahead and do the setup here. All right, and then they've got a little guide here to get us going. Explains exactly what the Ledger Nano is. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started here. You wanna set aside a little time to handle this. It is gonna take 30 minutes. It probably won't take me that long. Uh, and you'll need a pen. So I've got my trusty pen here. Put it over here. And like I said, you don't want anyone to see this recovery phrase, so uh, make sure you're alone. And let's get going. All right, so I'll go ahead and connect the USB cable. All right, and then there's some step-by-step -step instructions here. All right, so the first thing we'll wanna do is uh, use this button to navigate to in this direction, that little arrow is pointing. You'll just scroll through these instructions until we get to set up as new device. 
Now, you could also restore from recovery phrase, which is uh, what we're writing down this recovery phrase for. But for the first time set up, we're going to use this command. So in order to activate the command, we'll use both buttons. We'll just press both buttons, and then we'll choose a pin code. So we'll hit both buttons again, and then they give us the opportunity to choose a pin code. All right, so I'm going to hit next step here. All right, and then we'll just move over to the next one. And they give us instructions on how the pin code works. You'll just use these buttons here to navigate up and down until you find the number that you want. And then you'll hit both buttons when you get to the number that you want. All right, and then it's going to advance over to the next button. Now, when you get to the fourth number, you can hit both buttons when you see that check mark to complete. Uh, so if you hit both buttons now, it'll end, and then it'll ask you to confirm. But you can continue on if you want to add more numbers to your PIN code. I would recommend an eight number PIN code. All right, and then it's going to ask us to confirm the PIN code. So we'll hit both buttons again and we'll re-enter our number. And then when we're done, we can hit both buttons. And now it wants us to write down our recovery phrase. So we can just advance to the next step here. It'll explain a little bit about how the recovery phrase works. We'll go ahead and advance to the next button here. All right, so we'll use this button to advance over to the next screen. There's our first word. We'll go ahead and write that down. All right, and after we've written it down, we'll just advance to the next word here. And we'll just go through all the words that way. And notice they're numbered here and they're numbered on the card, so it makes it pretty easy. So let's go, just go ahead and get the rest of them written down. All right, and then when you get to that last word, you'll advance one more time. And then uh, you can go backwards to just verify that you've got all your words written down correctly. All right, and then just press this button to advance to the right uh, to do the confirm. Okay, so uh, we're going to hit both buttons here. All right, they're going to take it. We can uh, move over to the next step here and do the confirm. So the confirm number one, we'll refer to our card here and uh, navigate back and forth until we get to that first word. All right, and then when we find the word, we'll hit both buttons. And then we'll do the same thing for the second word. So my second word is weapon. So I'll just scroll around till I find weapon. We'll hit both buttons. Do the same thing for uh, all the rest of the words. All right, and there we go. We can go back over here and advance to the next screen. They even give you uh, some guidance here on how to save it or hide it in a good place. All right, so we'll go ahead and hit this last arrow here. And it gives us some more guidance. And on the final step, hit both buttons to continue. Okay, you're going to see processing here. And the device is ready. And they're going to have us press both buttons to enter the dashboard. Let's see what they got us doing on the screen over here. Let's see what we got that. Okay, we're done. Okay, now there's a little quiz here that we can take. So uh, maybe uh, I'll help you cheat, right? Let's take the quiz. Uh, as a Ledger user, my crypto is stored on my Nano or on the blockchain. As I mentioned, the, the private keys for the wallet are stored on the Nano, right? The cryptocurrency, the Bitcoin itself, is stored on the blockchain. All right, let's see what we got next. If my recovery phrase is no longer secure or private, my crypto is no longer safe and I need to transfer them to a secure place. All right, as I mentioned before, this backup phrase should never be revealed to anyone. I revealed mine to you, but it's simply a test phrase. I'm not going to store any Bitcoin in this wallet. I'm going to show you how to do it, but it won't be in this configuration. All right, so no, if anyone sees your backup phrase, it is no longer safe. 
All right, when you connect your Nano to your Ledger app, your private key is still offline. It is never connected to the internet, right? The private key is never sent across the cable to your computer. Uh, it's a little more complicated than that. Uh, the request is sent to the device. The device uses the private key to sign the transactions, and then the signed transaction is sent back across the cable to the computer. The private key is never exposed to your computer even when the cable is connected. So still offline. All right, and there we go. All right, and then uh, we'll take our next step here. We'll do our genuine check. Let's go ahead and finish this part on the device. All right, let's go ahead and hit both buttons. All right, and now we're at the, uh, the home screen of the device, right? This is where you will see your apps, All right? So let's go back over here. Let's hit this next button here. It's gonna check the device. All right, and then we're gonna get this uh, request here. It wants us to allow Ledger Manager on our device. So in order to do that, we'll hit both buttons. All right, and once we hit both buttons, it does the genuine check and uh, lets you know that the device is in fact a genuine Ledger device. We'll hit continue here. And now we're ready to start adding accounts. All right, actually you'll notice that there's a blue dot here this means that we should go into the Ledger Manager and run some updates. Whenever you see that blue dot, that means you need to run some updates. So uh, let's go ahead and hit this, go back into the Manager. All right, and you'll notice that my uh, device needs to be, the, the firmware on my device needs to be updated. Sometimes the firmware updates come out after they've uh, created the inventory. So if you get a device that has outdated firmware on it, even out of the box, you should go ahead and get that firmware updated. It's very simple. Just go ahead and hit the update firmware button. All right, we do have our recovery phrase. We'll hit continue. All right, and then you'll just uh, advance using this top button to go over. Verify that identifier that you're seeing on your computer screen. and then go ahead and hit both buttons to perform the update. You'll need to re-enter your pin code here. All right, and you'll see processing here. You'll just enter your pin one more time. All right, you'll be back at this home screen here, and then you're done. All right, you'll hit allow Ledger Manager again. All right, and now the firmware is completely up to date. You can check here, All right? And then you can see there's no more blue dot down here. So we're ready to proceed. Uh, the first thing I'll do is go ahead and get the Bitcoin app installed because I want to store some Bitcoin on here. So I'll hit install. And there you go. Now I've got the Bitcoin app on here. Now we could go, uh, there's lots of different cryptocurrencies that you can manage on your Ledger Nano device. Uh, but today we're just going to focus on Bitcoin. So uh, now that I've got the app installed on my device, I'm going to go over to uh, manage my accounts. We'll hit that. All right. And then they've got Bitcoin selected here. I'm going to hit continue. And it tells us to open the Bitcoin app. So we'll hit both buttons here. All right. And when it's done scanning the device, and synchronizing, you'll see it's offering you uh, a Bitcoin wallet account. And then I like to take this little one off, right? I'll just call it Bitcoin. I only have one here. We'll hit add account. And now we've successfully added our Bitcoin account. We can go down here to accounts and uh, see that we have a Bitcoin account, uh, an empty Bitcoin account ready and waiting for some Bitcoin. Now, just to clarify, each account, you can add multiple accounts. Each account is, in effect, a cryptocurrency wallet. But in a broader sense, the cryptocurrency wallet is a private key and a public key. Now, the public key allows Ledger Live to uh, view the balance, send and receive crypto, 
and give you a transaction history, right? But the private key is the part that allows you the access, and that's the part of the wallet that's stored on the device, right? The device is more like a keychain than a wallet, right? So let's put some Bitcoin in this wallet. As I mentioned at the beginning, I'm assuming you've purchased some cryptocurrency on an exchange. I'll leave that part up to you, but I'm gonna show you how to transfer some of your Bitcoin off the exchange into your own wallet. And now I've logged myself into Coinbase. I'm gonna go over here to Portfolio. And you can see that I have a balance in my Bitcoin wallet on Coinbase, but I would like to store this Bitcoin in my own wallet that I've just set up. So I'm gonna go back over to Ledger Live here, and I'm gonna choose Receive, and I'll hit Continue. And there is the Bitcoin address that I'm gonna send my Bitcoin to. This is my own personal Bitcoin address. I'll copy this into my clipboard and I'll verify on the device though that address. Just eyeball it, make sure it's correct. And then I'll just click approve here. All right, now I've just verified that I have the correct address on my device. And as you noticed, I copied that into my clipboard. So let's go over to our Coinbase account and let's paste in that address right here where it says two. I'm sending the Bitcoin to my wallet, and I just got the address of my wallet from Ledger Live. Right? I'll go ahead and send it all, and then I'll hit continue. And then I'll choose send now again, and they're gonna give us a little warning. It's an irreversible transaction. I know that, it's going to my own wallet. I've uh, made sure I've done all the correct steps. All right, I'll put in my verification code. All right, and there it goes. Now, it mentions that it could take 30 minutes. Uh, generally, it comes in pretty quickly. It could take 30 minutes. It could take longer, depending on the situation. But in most cases, it comes pretty quick. We'll hit Done here. And you can see that my balance on Coinbase is now zero. I've moved my Bitcoin off of Coinbase. It's going into my own wallet. All right, we'll just wait a minute here. Now, at this point, while we're waiting for the Bitcoin, we can safely disconnect our device, right? The device was only there to generate the address for us. If we click where it says synchronized up here, it'll do a resync. And we can see that the Bitcoin has already arrived. It took uh, about a minute, so it wasn't a big deal. All right, so now we have the Bitcoin stored in our own wallet. It is unhackable. It is uh, unconfiscatable, right? because we are the ones that control the private key of this wallet. Now, this is uh, one of the safest and securest ways to store your Bitcoin. There are other hardware wallets out there on the market. There are other types of wallets out there, desktop-based wallets, phone-based wallets. But I believe that the Crypto Starter Pack that comes with this uh, Ledger Nano S, a Ledger Nano hardware device is one of the safest and most secure ways to store your cryptocurrency. Now that you've got your Bitcoin safe and secure in your wallet, you might want to check out the link they give you to the Crypto Beginner's Guide so that you can learn a little bit more about how crypto works. It's a very good 26-page PDF document. Uh, they'll give you a link when uh, you make the purchase. All right, so you can download it to your computer and save it on your hard disk and read it at your leisure offline. And it's a great little guide that explains all about crypto, the basics, security, ownership, and gets you started on your crypto journey. So I hope what I showed you will help you get your Ledger Nano S set up and get some Bitcoin stored in there to get you started on your particular journey. If you have any questions about anything I did, please throw them up in the comments and I'll do my best to get them answered. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that you can click that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.